Hello folks, I hope you're well. Today we're going to look at three essential scales for bass players. Whether you're brand new to the instrument or if you've been playing for a while and you've gone down the route of learning some songs that you like, you've probably come across the idea that scales are a key part of playing bass. Now you don't need to dive too deep into the world of music theory to get a handle on the stuff that is really going to help you from a playing point of view. In fact, on the bass guitar, I think there's three, maybe four scales that you want to get learned, and then that might be enough for you. And when I say scales, I don't mean G, A, B, I mean types of scale. And the ones we're going to look at today, and I think the key ones that you need to get your head around are major, minor, and pentatonic. Strangely, scales are something that many musicians, certainly in like the popular world, are resistant to. I think it's this idea that they're boring or maybe you've heard that, oh, you don't need to learn them, and maybe you don't, but I'd put it like this. You wouldn't expect to turn up to catering college and on the first day, learn how to cook a seven course, three Michelin starred tasting menu. You're probably gonna be learning how to chop an onion. And it's the same with music. You don't need to learn these things, but it's only going to help your understanding and it's probably also going to make you more creative as a player. So why wouldn't you at least give it a go? Another common thing with scales is that for some reason people are intimidated by them. On any instrument that is. Now I don't think you need to be. Particularly on the bass, there's a really simple, systematic way that you could approach this and that's what we're going to look at today. You've probably heard that there's scale shapes all over the neck and that's right, but the first thing to do is just get your head and your ears around the scales in one position. We're going to look at a major scale in one shape, we're going to look at a minor scale in one shape, and we're going to look at a pentatonic scale in one shape. I'm also going to chuck a blue scale in there for free. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and let me know in the comments if you want me to expand on any of the things that I discuss in this video. So let's start by having a look at the minor pentatonic scale. All of the scales today are going to be one octave there or thereabouts. The limitations with the bass guitar are such that that's about usually what you can manage across the four strings in one position. The key to understanding scales on the bass guitar is understanding which finger you start with. So before each scale, I'm going to mention that. And if you only take away one thing from this video, that will be a great thing to take away. All of the scales today are going to be in A. So let's start with our A minor pentatonic. The root note is on the fifth fret of the E string. And we start this scale with the index finger. I've put my index finger on the fifth fret and we're going to move then to the eighth fret on the same string. So the first two notes, we've got A, C. Then we're going to change string. A string, fifth fret. Then the seventh fret. Those two notes are D and E. We're going to play the same frets on the D string. Those two notes are G and A. And you can hear, hopefully, that that is your one octave minor pentatonic scale in A. Obviously the scale continues onto the G string and I'll just show you that now. It's very simple. It's the fifth and the seventh fret on the G string. The whole scale is gonna sound like this. I would encourage you to be quite strict with the fingers that you use. So I'm starting with the index finger. That's the most important thing here. I use the little finger when I stretch one, two, three frets. And I use my third finger when I'm doing a two fret stretch. And I stick to that throughout the scale. Here's your freebie. We're gonna add one note in, in two different places in the scale, and you've got your blue scale. So here we go. Five, eight, five, six, seven, five, seven, five, seven, eight, and back we go. So I just run those two scales again really slowly, starting with our index finger. Here's the minor pentatonic scale in A. And here is the A blue scale. Moving on, 
the A minor scale. This is the A natural minor scale. That's all we're gonna worry about at the moment. And it starts on the index finger again. It's really similar to the pentatonic scale in terms of how it feels under the hand. Obviously, we've got a few extra notes. We start on the fifth fret of the E string, the note A. Then we go to seven, then eight. Then we move to the A string and we do exactly the same. Move to the D string, five, seven. There is our one octave. If you want to include the G string in this scale, the way I recommend to do it to begin with is to shift back your position. So you're going to put your index finger on the fourth fret and play four, five, seven. Let me roll through that whole scale for you nice and slowly. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, back down, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And once more, without me talking all over it. And finally, let's have a look at the A major scale. The reason I've done this one last is because this starts with a different finger. So it's the same note, it's the fifth fret of the E string, but I want you to put your middle finger on there, at least to begin with. So we go five, then I want you to put your little finger on seven of the E string. We're gonna change strings and we go four, five, seven on the A string. Then to the D string, four, six, seven, and that's your octave. And we can continue, of course, and we go four, six, seven. So exactly the same on the G string and back down. So I'll go through that once more, nice and slowly, starting with the middle finger on the fifth fret of the E string. Here we go. Now the great thing about all of those scale shapes, once you've got your fingers around the patterns, particularly which finger you start with, is that it opens up the whole neck for you in two significant ways. First of all, and perhaps the most obvious thing to do once you've learned those scale shapes, is to move them up and down the neck. So we're doing them all in A. But if you wanted to do it in B, any of those scales in B, let's say for argument's sake, the pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale, all you do is find the B on the E string and play the same shape at that position. And that applies to any note, pick a note, let's say G, here's a G. This does, of course, rely on you knowing the notes on the E string. That's something I'm gonna cover in another video, but try and learn it in the meantime. It's really not that hard. The second way that you can expand this knowledge is by moving those scale shapes down a string. Now, the beauty of this, and I think a lot of people miss this in the early days, is that all of those scale shapes that you've just learned work exactly the same when you start from a note on the A string. Now, even though we've lost a string, we've still got enough scope over the three remaining strings to get one octave versions of all of those scales. Let me show you what I mean. Here, using exactly the same shape as we used when we started from the E string, is the D minor pentatonic. So here is the note D. There's our octave. And here is our D natural minor scale. Again, using exactly the same scale shape as when we started on the E string. And finally, the D major scale. Again, start with your middle finger on the root note and off we go. Exactly the 
exactly the same scale shape as when we started on the E string. So you can see with just those three shapes and a little bit of effort, we've opened up a lot of possibilities from a playing point of view. And hopefully it also means the next time someone says to you, this is in G major, you don't do this. You will at least have a fighting chance of playing some of the right notes. And that's what it's all about. So to wrap it up, my advice would be focus on those three shapes, tune your ear to the sound of them and get comfortable with which finger they start on and which fret you need to be on to get the scale that you want. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, keep playing.